Hey everyone, was not anticipating making a video today, but uh, circumstances have come up. We're going to cover it real quick. Gizmodo article, Linda Kodega, because she has been on the front line of this thing, start to finish. Uh, D Does the Dragon scraps plans to update its open game license? In a surprise statement today, Kyle Brink announced that Wizards of the Coast will preserve the OGL 1.0A and move more of D&D &D into the Creative Commons. So, long and the short of it, we won. We won. And by we, I mean the entire gaming community sticking together, making a forceful statement. We done did it. So, all right, here we go. I'm going to go through this. Um, please, please uh, bear with me because... Um, I had to print out the article so I could cover it real quick. And, you know, you're printing up something off the internet, especially off of uh, Gizmodo. The breakage of the page is terrible. All right. Um, Wizards of the Coast, publishers of Dungeons & Dragons, announced today that we'll no longer, no longer be pursuing deauthorization of the open game license 1.0a, abandoning plans previously stated in the drafted OGL 1.2. This statement comes after relentless fan backlash against the decision to deauthorize that uh, against the decision to deauthorize that was revealed after uh, IO9 reported on the leaked OGL 1.1. After three weeks of near constant pressure, it appears as if Wizards of the Coast is fully paying attention to the fan base. Um. The deauthorization of the OGL 1.0a was a huge sticking point for fans and third-party publishers who made a living using a license that was granted nearly two decades ago. <clears throat> Opinions varied on whether or not Wizards of the Coast could even legally deauthorize, with many people, including Ray Dancy, one of the original... Architects of the OGL 1.0a arguing that it was never intended to be deauthorized and that the very act of doing so was not built into the legal wording of the license. Dungeons & Dragons executive producer Kyle Brink said in the statement that these lively survey results or these live survey results are clear. You want OGL 1.0a, you want irrevocability, you like Creative Commons. I guess they actually were paying attention to the surveys. Damn. I, I really thought that my, my time spent doing the survey was just me throwing away time. Um, good to know it wasn't. This statement was expressed so overwhelmingly in the playtest OGL 1.2. Playtest. I am never going to stop laughing at that. That Wizards of the Coast had to pay attention. Originally, it was going to keep the playtest open for two weeks. However, Brinks writes, The feedback was in such high volume, and its direction is so plain that we're acting now. A.K.A. they could not afford any more loss. The concessions Wizards and D&D &D make in this announcement are huge. It will not attempt to deauthorize OGL 1.0a, it is putting the entirety of the system's reference document, which is the SRD, uh, for D&D &D, uh, uh, 5.1 into the Creative Commons, and it is abandoning its previously stated intentions for virtual tabletops. Now, uh, I got, oh, sorry, I got more to go. Uh, one thing to note is that Brink states that putting the entire 400-page SRD into the Creative Commons means the fans don't need to Take Dungeons and Dragons word for it that Brink would explicitly acknowledge the lack of trust between fans and publishers and Wizards of the Coast is incredible. Finally, the company finished the statement with an olive branch. Olive branch. I feel like it's an olive branch they're gonna try and beat us with later. Publishing the SRD uh Finally, the company finished with, uh, the statement with an olive branch, publishing the SRD immediately and stating, here's a PDF of SRD 5.1 with the Creative Commons license. By simply publishing it, we place it under an irrevocable com uh, Creative Commons license. We'll get it hosted in a more convenient place next week. 
It was important that we take this step now, so there's no question. Hold on, last page. Ever since the rumors around the OGL 1.1 began to circulate in late November uh, 2022, third-party content publishers and fans of Dungeons & Dragons began to mobilize. After the leaks, the backtracks, and general confusion, everyone was ready to defend their hobby. And they did. Go us. Fans rallied around hashtags, influencers, and journalists as they sought to open uh, sought to open D and D and preserve the OGL 1.0a uh, and its legacy. If Dungeons and Dragons follows through on its promises in the statement, it's possible that they could restore the goodwill it lost then and now. Ultimately, this is a huge victory for the fans. And while the battle is won, the war might not be over. Everyone is waiting to see the four corners of the contract, despite the SRD's entry into the CC, um, which would be the Creative Commons. Uh, but the fans are ready, and Wizards of the Coast is going to think twice before poking that particular dragon. Editor's note, this article is part of a developing story. The information cited in this page may change as the breaking story unfolds. All right, so what does this all mean? Well, it means for now we have won. Does it mean that vigilance is uh, key, paramount, and required? Yes. As I said, I have a feeling this is them relenting for now. Um, in the words of many newscasters and in, in light of history, um, the failure of the attempt does not mean the failure of the movement. Therefore, this may be the dry run before they get it right. And I think that may, in fact, be the case. I have a feeling that we are looking at a failed dry run to do this, and they will again. They will try again later. How, when, and and with, by what means? I don't know. Um, but I, that that whole thing of here's the olive branch, but they might want to beat us with it later. Uh, I fully, I fully uh, subscribe to that because. There's money in them, our hills, and they're they're gonna get it out of there one way or another. They just realized they went about it the wrong way this time. So next time it may be more gradual. It's gonna be um, what do they call it the uh, the frog in the slow cooking pot. Um, that that's a very big possibility. But yeah, this is where we're at. Um, again, my hope is that this all works out in our favor, and. Um, I hope that uh, we've all learned something. Maybe maybe we actually can stick together. Now, do I think that this means that Orc is going to get... They're going to just drop doing Orc. No. I think Orc, Black Flag, and everything else is going to wind up being the new default. I think what's going to happen is this is nice, and this will be uh, an option for people who want to publish to all the various systems, do like uh, system-neutral content. Uh, I could see this also being a case of we're going to publish it, you know, here, here, and here. It's the same content, but we're going to tweak it for each thing so it's easily accessible. Um, BRW does that kind of thing. They they publish for various systems all at the same time. So I, I could see that. Uh, I am actually hoping that this also serves as a lesson for uh, other types of gaming, for card gaming, for war gaming, all of that. Where, hey, you know what? If the community can stick together, we can we can make change. We can actually affect change. We can stop bad corporate movements and corporate greed. Um, maybe maybe uh, the Warhammer players should uh, take notice. I mean, maybe it's time to take a stand against uh, Games Workshop and some of their practices. Just saying. All right. Um, comment section. Hit me up. Let's let's do this thing.